G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Bandage Cube Creations. Well in this video we're going to look at a cube called the 3 bar. And this is an obvious derivative or a next level of the 2 bar cube twist puzzle, which had two big clocks on opposite faces. So here the coloring is a little bit different. There's the two big clocks on opposite faces. We've got a three, a third clock between those two faces. So I suppose it's different than the possibility of three big clocks on adjacent faces. You could technically put one here. I think that would be unturnable. It's my feeling on that one. So necessity states that if we're going to have three big clocks, I think that's actually the maximum you can have on any puzzle, just looking at it. So this one was proposed by Burjo, and it's definitely, you know, proposed to be an easier sort of variant, but it is quite interesting. And one of the things about it is it's quite hard to scramble. And so what I mean by that is obviously to start scrambling it, I want to have these big clocks parallel, and then I'll do stuff like this, as I normally would, I suppose. Uh, there are a lot of pieces that just seem to not naturally disappear from each other. So there's a pair here. And I mean, I can turn that around and yes, I can take that off, but there's another pair that's appeared. So I, I suppose what I've found is I've got to do this sort of thing as well, try and bring some different pieces into the mix. When I just can't get rid of something, I end up doing something like, I uh, can't even remember if I can remember what I'm doing. Probably move a lot of the time what happens is you end up doing things that don't really make that kind of difference now this I'd like to separate from that so I'm just going to turn uh, to here can I actually turn to there no and this is the problem that I want to turn that off of here uh, the way now that I do it is down to there, but I've got this clock in the way. So I'll just try and move that to the back initially. Then I can turn that down. And finally, I'm like, ah, oh, good. I can actually separate it. So it does take a little bit of thinking sometimes to, to work your way through how to get pieces where you want them. I'm just going to keep scrambling this. It's going to be a few minutes until I'm happy with it. Okay, I think I've finally got every piece not next to where it belongs, so to speak. So if I do another turn, it's probably going to bring something back together. So I'm going to be happy with this. Now, for the solve, what I would do first is just position everything where it should be. Position all these big clocks. So uh, before I do that one, I want to get those opposites in place and then this one. Okay, now in this position, it's really tricky to turn anything except this upper face. So that's not really helpful. What I want to do is have them parallel. And the initial stage is a pretty quick and simple stage. And it's just solving the edges. And they don't flip. So what I mean by that is let's have a look at this bottom face. I've got to get the white, red. And in order to do that, let's see where it is. It's up the top. So I'm going to turn it around so that I've got access to move the piece. And I'll just three cycle that one in. Let's turn back. What's the other one? The white orange. But I'm not necessarily going to place that yet because what I now want to think is let's get the yellow edges done. And you'll notice they're all white or yellow. There's None of them have flipped at all. So possibly initially I'd have a look at the red. Now... I can tell from here, just from turning it like that, that these three are solved. The white orange and the blue yellow have got a swap. And so that means in order to do that, I'm going to do what I would normally do, which is turn this upper face one turn and now solve the edges. So there's a yellow blue that belongs in the back there. So I'll place that one first. There's also a yellow red that goes here. I'll do that one next. And that'll leave one, two, three pieces to deal with the yellow oranges going here, the white orange to there. So that will tell me the piece movement for the last three. That face is good. I 
can put this one back now. The edges are done and they're never harder than that. So we move on to the corners. Now the corners, the way that I'm going to do it is, I guess the same way that I maybe, I, to be honest, can't remember. In the 2x4 or the 2x4 version 2 that I show, I absolutely use the corner piece series for cuboids where I cycled a corner from the top two corners along the bottom. So the, the thing here is what I want to do is actually have this on the bottom. So I'm going to call the bottom my white face because it is now. And I also need these things to be parallel. And I am working with the two corners at the bottom here. And the reason for that is I don't want it like that. Because if I try and turn right and left faces, even if that is okay, this is not. So it kind of has to be in that position. Now this is totally fine until the last three when it can cause a headache or two, just positioning the pieces. So let's have a look. I would always go to try and do three yellows first and then just use the fourth to gradually place the last pieces on the white face. Let's have a look. Have I got any? I've got a yellow, red, blue here and that is an okay position. So I would say I'm going to piece movement like that, do an upper prime turn of my upper face, or an anti-clockwise turn of that upper face as the first turn, if my piece movement is that direction. So that's yellow, blue, red. Let's ensure that the yellow, blue, red position is waiting for it. I don't care what else is happening. Let's go ahead. Okay, that is done. I'll put that back. I got another yellow. I do. I've got a yellow, blue, orange down here now, and that needs to go to there. That's the perfect position. So this time, piece movement is like that, and I'm turning the upper face first, and then the right face. Okay, that's done. That's got myself three yellow corners. Now I'm going to start concentrating on the white corners. So if I put that back initially, what have I got? I can see that I've got a corner here and here that kind of need to swap. So ordinarily, I'd just go, cool, I'll just maybe move that to there and use this to help me, this one up here. But I've got to have them like that. So at this point, I'm just going to see if there's another white corner that I can place. This is white, orange, blue, which is the one up there. Now, I can happily put it in there. Um, the problem that you'll notice is if I do this, it's then going to leave these last two corners in the wrong configuration. So what I tend to do is go ahead and do it and just see if that's easy enough to deal with. Um, so let's place the white, blue, orange to there. And this will come out, but that's okay. We'll see where that lands us. Okay, let's put everything back and have a look what we've got. So we do, we definitely need this. The question is, how simple is it to rearrange pieces? Now, what I've discovered is that if it's two down here on this side of a, of a big clock, it's not overly simple at all because if I want to take one of them up to the top face. I've got to take both of them up to the top face. So what I then kind of do is say, if I'm going to have two white corners done, I really want the opposite two to be done. So let's have a think about this and say, is there any way, well, what's up here? White, red, green. Um, if I, let's see what could happen. I solve the white, red, green. That will push that one across to there and this one up to here. I think that'll be a better position. Now, the bottom is in the right place. These need to be on the sides, so I just want to move them to the sides before I start. All done. Let's move that back, and we'll just see where we're at. Um, we've definitely got three left, and now what I want to do is I'm going to hold it like this, and this is where this becomes a little bit easier. I would like to get that white, blue, red corner to that position because what will then happen is the white, blue, red will go to here. The
the yellow orange green will go up to here and the white green orange will come back to there so the question is how do i get it to the top and you can see what i was saying i can now separate this piece from that piece to do setups turn that first so that i can actually move it and i really want this to be in the same position so i'm not going to move that from where it is but i want this to land here so let's turn that up to there a left two then an upturn to put it at the back and then a left two that's left that in that position but it's put this over here okay so left two up left two are my setups i now have my three pieces ready to cycle all done i'll undo those setups which will be a left two then an up prime then a left two and now when i come back everything has been solved so as i was saying just those last three corners can be slightly tricky but i'm sure you'll agree that's definitely not up at our bi cube level a fairly straightforward one but it's a good puzzle to get the techniques of using those sort of algorithms well here is the puzzle for the next video this one is called the advanced y cube you might remember number of episodes back i did a puzzle on the beginner y cube which was just these three pieces here so the advanced has an extra clock there what that means is that instead of it really being a clock on a clock it is now a slice so the slice going from center through an edge to another center so we've now got a slice and we've got two pairs as opposed to a clock and two pairs that is what's coming up in the next video